Now that we've introduced what a topic model is, let's now go to how you would actually use a topic model, how you would go from data to an actual set of topics that describe what's going on in that data set. There are several ways of doing this. Right now we're going to focus on an approach called Gibb sampling. And this is relatively straightforward, at least for this model. Recall that what we want to do in inference is we want to figure out the latent variables that describe what's going on in a topic model. What we're going to assume is that we have some collection of latent variables that completely describe how we go from topics to allocations to assignments to generate our complete document collection. And these don't have to be particularly good explanations of what's going on. We just have to have some explanation of how our data came to be. And what we're going to do is we're going to slowly change these and hopefully get to a better answer. So the way this works is we're going to do this on a word-by-word -word basis. And what we're going to do is we're going to change the topic assignment of a single word. We're going to pretend that we don't know the topic assignment of a single word, but we know all of the other assignments of all of the other words, and that gives us a complete description of our data set, except for this one, one word, in this case, the word record. And we want to figure out, given everything else we know, what topic should record get. And so all of the other topic assignments for all of the other words and all of the other documents will inform us what topic record should have. And we'll then figure out what topic record should get. That will change the model in some way. And then we move on to the next word. And again, all of the other words in all of the other documents and in all of the rest of this document will influence what topic we assign to label. And then that will update our model and hopefully our model gets a little bit better. We're going to do this again and again and again until we have a good model. If we write this out mathematically, basically what we're doing is we're going to find the conditional probability distribution of a single word's topic assignment conditioned on the rest of the model, all of the other words' topic assignments, and all of the other latent variables in the model. And we want to only care about this latent variable, but there are other latent variables in the model. There's the theta, the distribution over topics in a document, and there's the beta, the distribution over words in a topic. We're going to ignore those, and the way that we're going to ignore them is by integrating them out. My goal here isn't to go deeply through the math. My primary goal here is to give the intuitions. If you're really interested in the integrals, you can work them out, look at the reading for more information, but that's not as important as the intuitions here. So hopefully you'll trust me that the integrals work out the way that I say that they do, and this will give you an intuition of how Gibbs sampling works for these models. So if you actually do the integration, you get a conditional probability expression that looks something like this. There are two main parts to this conditional probability. The first part says how much each document likes a topic, and the second part is how much each topic likes a word. We'll go into each of these parts in more detail. One thing that you need to remember is that this is a conditional probability distribution for a single word in a single document. So this is going to be a vector. This is going to have a probability of that word taking on each of the k topics. And so this vector will encode how likely this word is to go to each of the k different topics, and then we will choose which topic it gets from that conditional probability distribution. Okay, so now let's dig in a little deeper what's going on inside this conditional probability distribution. Okay, so each element in this k-dimensional vector corresponds to how much this topic is likely to be the new topic of this word. Okay, so the first term has how many times this document has already used this topic. So the more that a document uses the topic, the more that it's likely to continue using this topic. So if it has used this topic a lot, you're going to see more of this topic in the future. The second most important part of this expression is how many times the topic has used this word already. So if a topic has already used the word 
record before, it's going to more likely use that word again. Next, we're going to add in the Dirichlet prior for the Dirichlet distribution that generates the multinomial distribution over topics for each document. And this acts as a smoothing term. So before, we talked about smoothing in terms of naive bays, and this functions in the same way. Even if a document has never used a topic before, if the number of times that the document uses topic is zero, so n sub dk is zero, uh, this first term won't go completely to zero. You're still going to add in this alpha term that acts as, as like a smoothing term and is in fact the Dirichlet parameter that gives you the multinomial distribution over topics. And the same thing goes for how much the topic likes individual words. Even if the topic hasn't used this word before, there's some chance that it will use it going forward. And so we then add up all of the first term and normalize it. Altogether, this first term encodes how much this document likes a particular topic, and the second term encodes how much a topic likes a particular word. Okay, so now let's go through an example that I have stolen from David Mimno. So let's say that we have a document, and we're just going to assume that we have some topic assignments. Uh, let's say that we generate them randomly. So we, we take a case-sided die, we roll it, and we generate all of these topic assignments. And we do that for every word in every document, and now we've done that for the entire corpus, and now let's try to make it better doing Gibbs sampling. So in the equation that I showed you, we have counts. Counts of how many times a document used a particular topic, and counts of how many times each topic used various words. So down here, we have the V counts that I showed you before. So this is saying, in topic 1, the word Etruscan was used once, in topic 3, the word Etruscan was used 35 times. So this corresponds to the V that I showed you before, how much the topic likes particular words. Now let's say that we want to update the assignment for the word trade in this document. It was assigned to topic 2. We're now going to take that away. We're going to pretend we don't know what the topic assignment was. And so now the count for trade in topic 2 is going to go from 8 down to 7. Now that it's done that, we don't know what the topic assignment for trade is. We need to figure that out, and we're going to use the conditional probability distribution that I showed you before to do that. So, now let's plug it into that equation. Now remember, there are two parts to that conditional probability equation. The first part is how much does this document like a topic? So, this document has used topic 1 a bunch, and it's used topic 3 a bunch hasn't used topic 2 very much, and we're going to represent that with these blue bars. And so notice that topic 2 is not completely zero. Topic 2 still has a little bit of probability because of the Dirichlet parameter that we talked about before that acts like a smoothing term. But the primary contributor is how many times the document has used this topic before. That's the n counts that we talked about before. The second part of the equation is how much each topic likes the word trade. And so, trade has been used a lot in topic 1, a little bit in topic 2, and barely at all in topic 3. And we're going to multiply these two terms together. So the second term is how much the topic likes a word. That gets multiplied by the first term that corresponds to how much the document likes each of the topics. And we can think about this geometrically where the width corresponds to the first term and the height corresponds to the second term. So when we multiply those together, we get the probabilities. And here you can see that we have a big conditional probability for selecting topic 1, and topic 2 and topic 3 really doesn't have a chance. So we throw a dart at this, and let's say that we land in topic 1, which makes the most sense. So now the word trade is going to get assigned to topic 1 and we update our counts accordingly. So before, the word trade was used 10 times in topic 1. That count now goes up to 11, and trade takes on topic 1. And now this document likes using topic 1 a lot more than it did before. And both 
the horizontal and the vertical components of the probability that we computed before get a little bit larger. So in the future, topic one would have been more likely than it was before. When you select a new topic for a word, this corresponds to sampling from a multinomial distribution. You're going to compute this k-dimensional vector, you'll then normalize it so it sums to one, and then you're going to make a draw from that multinomial distribution. And you can do that after you've normalized that distribution by drawing a random number between 0 and 1, and then finding the first bin that is greater than the value that you drew. So that's it. That's the very simple algorithm for fitting a topic model to data. And here it is written a little bit more formally. You go through all of your documents, you go through every word in every document, you decrement the variables associated with that topic assignment, you sample a new topic assignment, and then you increment the counts again. That's it. So even though you now should be able to implement this on your own, I encourage you not to do that except to understand how it's working. If you actually use this in practice, you should use an existing implementation. I recommend trying first Mallet, which is a Java-based implementation of Gib sampling for topic models. It's relatively simple to use, but is also pretty fast. So it's a great place to start. There are some implementation details that we didn't talk about here. For example, how do you set the hyperparameters? Mallet takes care of that in reasonable ways for you, but underneath all of that is this very simple algorithm that iteratively selects new topic assignments for each of your words. And from this very simple algorithm, you can run topic models over document collections with millions or tens of millions of documents without too much difficulty. And once you have those topic analyses, you can understand what's going on inside those data sets and perform this really, really high-level summary of all of the themes going on in your collection. One of the reasons that topic models have been so influential in the data science, machine learning, and natural language processing literatures is that this kind of approach, creating a generative model for your data and applying it to large document collections, is relatively straightforward unless you gain insights about what's going on inside these data sets. Once you understand how to go from a model like latent Dirichlet allocation to an inference algorithm, you can then start tweaking the model to have it generate the kinds of things that you're interested in and then create new models that reflect that. And that allows you to build even deeper insights of large data sets.